Hello and welcome to Neighborhood Nature. My name is Lisa and I'm a librarian at St. Albert Public Library and my co-host is Hannah who is a U of A student in animal biology. In today's episode we will be featuring a flying rodent and dragonfly snacks. It's turned quite cold recently and I'm sure you're thinking that there probably might not be as many insects around right now. But actually they are still around including this mayfly. Despite its name it is still around in August. You can find mayflies all through the summer. And two ways you can tell it's a mayfly is because of the very long sensory bristles on the hind end. This one has two, but others can have different numbers. And you can also see that the wings stand upright and meet in the middle. They don't fold back like uh, flies or some kinds of, of butterflies would. Another thing that you can see right now are moths. Typically you can see them in the evening, but this one happened to be out during the day. If you want to find lots of moths, one thing you can do is take a white sheet and shine a flashlight on it and do this in the evening when it's dark. And this works best if you're in a place that doesn't have a lot of other lights around. So doing it in a city often you don't get very much, but you might be lucky and find something interesting. And if you're really lucky, you might find one of these. This is a flying squirrel. They are nocturnal. Um, they are also in the rodent family. And we saw this one in our backyard. Flying squirrels fly by gliding rather than flapping, which is one way you can tell them from bats, which are also something you might see if you stay up late watching for nature. If you look closely, you can see a line of darker fur from its left paw up onto its side. And what that is, it is the fold of the skin. And that's the fold that it uses to fly. So when it stretches it out, it is square. And this increases the surface area of the squirrel's body and allows it to glide instead of fall. And one other thing you can see in this photo is the very long flat tail. You can see it's light on the underside and dark on the top side. And it, it uses its tail to steer while it's gliding. If you sit outside during the day, you might see another rodent like this mouse. And they really like bird feeders. This is because birds can be messy eaters and drop seed underneath but it looks like this house sparrow is feeding pretty neatly. Birds also eat insects, including this grasshopper, which might be part of the reason why it's camouflaged so well. This kind has dark colored wings, so if you disturb it, it might startle you by jumping up suddenly and flying away. This grasshopper, on the other hand, is sitting out in the open and singing, so it's going to be very easy for a bird to find it to eat. Birds also like to eat caterpillars, but this one has a secret weapon. You can see it's very, very furry, and each of those hairs is a stinging hair. If you've ever tried to pick up one of these grasshoppers and poked your fingers on these hairs, you'll notice that it stings. So we don't recommend that you pick one up unless you know exactly what you're doing. This is a woolly bear caterpillar that will turn into a moth. There are lots of spread-winged damselflies right now, and they're often confused with dragonflies, because unlike other damselflies, they don't fold their wings back, so they look an awful lot like a dragonfly, but they're not. One of the ways you can tell them apart is by looking at the end of the, of the body. Damselflies have very thin, slender, thread-like bodies, whereas dragonflies are very bulky, like this one here. Some damselflies are very colorful, like this one here, which has sapphire eyes. Dragonflies can also have colorful eyes like this one here that has striped eyes. Some kinds of dragonflies, like this one here, hunt from a perch. So they find a tall object in an open space and they sit on it and they watch for insects like this one is doing. You can see it turning its head to look at the different insects as they fly by. And when it sees one that it wants, it will fly off the perch and grab it and then return to the perch. We like them because they eat mosquitoes. Dragonflies also eat other insects, and from what it looks like here, we think it's eating either a hornet, or a wasp, or a bee. You can see that the upper part of its mouth, as well as the sides, are movable and can be used to move its food about. It looks like dragonflies can also fall prey to wasps themselves, but we're not sure whether this wasp caught a live dragonfly or just found a dead one. This wasp is actually not eating the dragonfly right now. What it's doing is taking off parts that it doesn't want to eat and making it into a smaller package so that it can take it somewhere to eat it. You can see it's working on taking off the final wing. It looks like it's having a bit of trouble. Oh, and 
there goes the wing. Now that it's small enough to carry, the wasp will fly away with its parcel. This is a bald-faced hornet, which is also a wasp, and it has the same idea about how food should be prepared. This was a skipper butterfly, and as you can see, it's taken off the wings, and it seems to be preparing it into a small parcel, just like the yellow jacket did. Both of these wasps are likely bringing the food back to their nest to feed other wasps. Thank you for watching Neighborhood Nature. Be sure to check out all of our videos on our YouTube page or on our website, sapple.ca. We'll see you next week.